Hi everyone. Uh, today for the London Initial Station, we have Yuri Shabak, who is a cryptographer at Polygon Labs. Uh, he has worked in uh, quite a few different companies, including Orbis Labs and Origin Labs, and was a lecturer for quite a few years at FH Campus Vienna. Uh, his recent work uh, is on Fry, Expanded Codes, uh, also a nice paper on uh, recursion on Marlin that I encourage you to read, and breaking anonymous uh, credentials on cloud. Uh, so feel free to ask questions as we speak. Uh, I will notify um, you. And yeah, Lurish, the floor is yours. Thanks, Raphael. Uh couldn't hardly understand you because of, uh, I think it's your headset or, or my connection. But I, I just got the core, the most important statements and yeah, thanks for the introduction. So today we're gonna call, uh, talk about uh, a, a, a tiny paper that we, that we published, I think it was in May or so. Uh, it's a joint work with Daniel and, uh, and Jack, Jackie from Polygon Zero. And it's about uh, essentially of our search for the field we will support in Plonky three. So you find that uh, you it's about uh, going to the complex extension. We will see, not, not, uh, and uh, doing Ritz Solomon and calling over the unit circuit there. You find the ePrint as listed here. I don't know if you see my mouse cursor. Do you see my cursor? Or is it just the window? We can see your best slides. Uh, we can see yeah, your but mouse. you can't see my mouse. You you can see my mouse or you can't. No, we can. We can. That was a positive. You can. Yes. Okay. Okay. So let's start. Okay, so first of all, so this is here about Starks. So uh, they allow arbitrarily sized fields. Uh, so, and, and the main, uh, because they don't use elliptic curves uh, as uh, for commitment in this case. So um, you can use any, any arbitrarily sized field, the smaller, the better. And this allows, uh, and that's the main reasons why they're typically faster than standard elliptic curve systems. I'm not talking about recent advantages in, in, in foldings. Uh, that because the main reason for that, uh, for, for that uh, the main advantage of small fields is you can represent the trace uh, much, much tighter. So there's much less gap. It's not like you have something, uh, your elements which are typically quite small embedded in a 256 large, bit large field. And the second is, uh, so you have the tighter representation of the entire execution trace you want to prove. And second, it's uh, uh, most of the prover doesn't even run in the extension field. And most of it, what, 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 what are like dominant costs of the prover? Uh, it's uh, to commit the trace itself that costs in our case, an FFT, the FFTs to, to extrapolate to the fry sampling domain and then hash it. So these are two, the committing cost, commit cost and uh, evaluating constraints. So the trace is quite wide in our setting, quite long. So uh, evaluating the constraints involves these trace polynomials only. So the tighter the representation, the, their there, the cheaper the FFTs involved in polynomial arithmetics. So, roughly, ah, hi, Paul. Ah, oh, no, sorry, this was this was a different. This, so, so, uh, so, essentially, I, th I guess it was two twenty two thousand twenty one, but. Daniel might uh, correct me, maybe it was even 2020 when they discovered, uh, when Hamish disco uh, and the, was discovering the Goldilocks field, which is the Plonky 2 uh, base field, 64 bit field, uh, about the same year, uh, at least to private communication, uh, should have been also around 21. Uh, 
risk zero came up 22, but uh, they, they seem to already work with uh, the baby bear before they went to public here. So and baby bear is a 31-bit field. So uh, now thinking about Plonky 3, currently in development, we were asking ourselves, what is a good... Uh, uh, so first of all, we want to do a step from 64-bit down to 31-bit for, uh, for speeding up. And, the th and our question is, which, which is the best 31-bit field to choose? Either baby bear or some similar field to baby bear. That's the question here. And uh, what do I mean by better? So I'm not talking about hardware circuits. So really just about standard CPU architectures like ARM x86. So we want to... We want to have a field that performs faster than Baby Bear, and which is still stock friendly. So that's the aim. That was our aim. Okay, so Daniel was push, pushing very much, looking uh, uh, for possibilities involving the Masen prime M31. So that's 2 to the 31 minus 1. It's, it's really a prime. And uh, it's extremely elegant uh, for high-speed arithmetics over standard uh, CPU architectures. So uh, here's here's a table that I've just put, took out of uh, of the paper. So what you see here is uh, so uh, on, on two architectures, it's ARM and x84. Uh, the ARM is is an M Apple M1, and and the x86 is an Intel Ice Lake. And you see here, not in the uh, M31 arithmetics, in the parallelized setting, of course. So, uh, so it's the neon, if I understand correctly, it's the neon uh, uh, instruction set on ARM, and it's the AVX512 on, 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 X, on, on the Intel Ice Lake. So you see here clearly uh, that the moves, the cost of a multiplication of an M31 on both architectures is, a, is between 30 up and even more than 50% faster. So uh, it's important to point out here that, that the baby bear uh, uh, is, is using, is using Mo Montgomery ar arithmetics that's considered here. So, that, uh, so, so the advantage is not using plane reduction over the Mesen prime versus uh, plane reduction uh, over baby bear. It's really Baby Bear with its most, uh, most uh, let's say, reasonable uh, choice of uh, arithmetic representation, and uh, M31 with the standard uh, reduction, which is very cheap. So we expect speed out of multiplication. Uh, well, we observed, and I think that uh, Jackie did even further improve here. These are the, this is the table from from uh, from May. Uh, so between 35, 50 percent faster in multiplication. Addition the same. So that's the pro, much, uh, uh, much faster arithmetics on, on standard CPU architectures. The con is it's not FFT friendly. And in fact, it's the worst case of FFT uh, uh, friendliness you can face in prime fields because of that specific form, you know, P minus one uh, is two to the 31 minus two I mean, we can just take out one, two out of, of the sum and see this is the, 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 the term in the remaining term in the brackets. That's an odd number. So it's of the form P minus one is of the form two times odd. And that means you only have two roots of uh, two, uh, two adic roots of unity, which are order two roots. And these are exactly plus and minus one. So these are the only two adic roots you face in, uh, you find in M31. Okay, so we were thinking about strategies. What to do with that field if it's that worst case FFT friendly? So the first idea was uh, let's look at different different radices here. So P minus one is not too hard. It's worst case too hard, but it has a lot of other quite uh, uh, quite nice small prime factors. Here's the factorization. You see two 
three uh, with multiplicity two, seven, eleven, uh, thirty-one. I mean, these uh, uh, these small factors together uh, uh, multiply up to a domain of size of approximately fifteen bit large, which is not much. Uh, taking the one one five one, which is uh, unpleasantly large, into account, we we approach maybe some practical domain sizes beyond uh, one million. Uh, but still, it's not as fast. Even if you would have throughout three, a pure power of three, it wouldn't be as fast as a two attic F15. So that, uh, so we dropped that. Even uh, yeah, we dropped that idea. The other thing we were uh, we were looking at is expand the codes like uh, uh, Starks like breakdown. Uh, in the end, at least, I mean, everything, I'm, I'm a bit succinct here in the slides. So I'm not saying breakdown is slower uh, in general, but for, for the situations we face, uh, not too long traces. So, so the, the advantage of breakdown, the linear encoding cost of breakdown is only at very high high number of uh, of, of message uh, message size, very very, very large message, message sizes. And for the for the application we are looking for, uh, we are at the break even point. Ordinary read Solomon versus uh, uh, versus expander codes, where they where they almost evenly perform. So, so we expect we don't expect it much faster, and uh, maybe not even faster in our applications. Uh, besides that, you fa that 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 expander codes come with the problem of quite large proof sizes. Need to be wrapped all the time. It's not a showstopper, but again, something that needs to be taken into account in the whole recursive process. And the next thing is algebraic geometry, codes over 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 elliptic curves, like the ECFFT papers. Uh, we didn't uh, dive much into it. At least I didn't back then. Basically, the main reason is because it's advanced math. Yeah, I needed to learn algebraic geometry. That's a way to go. That's possible. That brings us also down being able to do the same uh, as, as baby bear does in the, or any other two-adic field does. But it, it uses a lot of uh, uh, advanced math here. So moving over to rational functions or an elliptic curve instead of having a polynomial IOP and so on. So uh, the funny thing is that over say M31, we can do much simpler. And that is what this talk is about. It's a simple idea. It's, it's something that we just ran over it uh, in a single day, essentially, after thinking of it, and, and we call it the Messen FFT. OK, so what is it? What is the nice thing about the M31, though it's so poorly two-adic? It's the, it's the complex extension. So the, there is only the, the polynomial x squared plus 1 is irreducible. There is no root of minus 1 in the Massen field. No square root of minus 1. So thus, you can make the complex extension as in the traditional analytic case you know from calculus, going from the real numbers to the complex. The arithmetic is the same. And uh, now, if you look at, in the final word, uh, what is the main advantage of that field? It's highly two-adic. Because uh, P, the, the, the order of its multiplicative group is P squared minus 1, which factorizes P plus 1 plus P, mi P minus 1. P minus 1 is troublesome as before, but P plus 1 it isn't. So we have at least, we find at least roots of unity of order 2 to the 31, actually also 2 to the 32. But we keep with the 2 to the 31 for reasons that become clear in a second. So 
there are the complex extension is FFT friendly. And if you look at these two to the 31 roots of unity, they belong to the unit circle. What is the unit circle? Just by definition, it's this, uh, it's this, uh, this uh, uh, quadratic uh, curve defined by this equation. So, uh, and you can simply verify that different ways to do it. You can move over more the classical uh, algebraic geometry. Uh, how do you call this projection, the parametrization of the unit circle? Uh, or you just look at the simple computation here. So, so you just, it, it, it's like, uh, so C, Z is like X. Uh, I, I use the standard notation like from calculus. Whenever I write Z, Z, it's, it's X plus I, Y, and uh, with real plus I, an imaginary part. So Z times the conjugate of C, and the conjugate of Z is uh, as, as in calculus, it's an automorphism of, of the field, which leaves the real, subfield invariant the real line invariant therefore you, you can uh, uh you can quite easily prove that it's actually the frobenius isomorphism that's quite simple i mean frobenius is isomorphism leaves the real line invariant that's given and if you plug in i the only the, the root of unity, you know that i is mapped to minus i under, under the pth power because p is. If you if you write as exactly the property that it's not, uh, yeah, just it's a simple calculation. There's not much uh, much to do. So, so you see immediately that uh, that demanding that x squared plus y squared is equal to one is demanding to x squared plus y squared is equal, or or z is a p plus one power uh, root of unity, not power, root of unity. So, so just one second back. So it's, it's FFT friendly. And this is, this is the, the order of the unit circle which co consists of all two to the 31 roots of unity. And three, that's well-known literature. You, over the standard analytic uh, 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 complex uh, FFT, a lot of uh, things are known if, you're, if, if you consider just real data as the input. You can optimize a lot and improve, improve the FFT significantly. And that's straightforwardly can be taken over to the final to the situation we face here m31 and its complex finite extension so uh so concretely in, in, in the cost of an fft over a domain of size 2 to the n is almost the same as a native let's first look at the native a native fft kule tuki to adic fft Per each, per each element of the domain, we have log domain half multiplications and log domain one additions, the double number of additions as multiplications. These are the op standard operation counts for Kule 2K. And for optimizing the complex FFT for real value data, gives us essentially gives us the same number of multiplications, just a little overhead, like uh, log one over two per element to be processed in addition. So very comparable. For, for those who are more familiar with all these uh, algorithms, this, this is the split radix in the, the so-called 3-3 three, three regime where multiplication by twiddle factor is realized by three uh, base field multiplication plus three base field adds. So, so how's that? Why is, not, why is that so much cheaper? And, the, and, and just, just the mind map here is because we have four very beautiful roots of unity. These are plus one, minus one. Okay, these are the standard beautiful roots, but also plus i, minus i. 
which calls out already for Radix 4 or something similar, uh, but split Radix even better. So, uh, uh, and conjugation, we have symmetry. So whenever I start with real value function in every single step of the FFD network, we can leverage symmetry, the spectrum, or let's say the output of the FFT of a real valued function is symmetric with respect to the conjugation map. That means if I consider, if I place, uh, place, uh, if you consider the value of the FFT at that point here, as I say, I, I didn't, I, I didn't draw any point here, then it's the same. Uh, over there, but just conjugated. So we have a Hermitian symmetry here, conjugate symmetry. And that's the main reason why it's so much faster than the complex FFT itself. So almost, just a second back, almost as fast as uh, a native FFT number of operations. And given the fact that the mole over M31 is cheaper than the mool over baby bear, like 30 to 50% cheaper. While the odds perform the same, we expect significant, we, we expect uh, a noticeable uh, improvement here. I say expect because the implementation is still about uh, to converge here. So it's not still not ready. So, so that, that solves one thing. So FFT is not a problem. We can use the split radix optimized for real. It's not a problem though we go to the complex extension. What about the other thing? We need to, we need to extrapolate from our witness domain to obtain read Solomon code words or obtain just values over Extended domains for polynomial arithmetics. If we consider here a, co a, a subgroup, the black one, yeah, the black one is subgroup of S one, yeah. So we have we have given a, a real valued function uh, uh, over S over H over the black subgroup, and we want to extrapolate it to uh, to a call set of it. That's the red one. So that's extrapolation. And in general, you know, you start off with real valued functions. You get something which has this Hermitian symmetry in the spectrum, but once you, you multiply with powers of, of the shift, if people know how, how extrapolation is used, uh, uh, FFT-based extrapolation is done, you disturb this symmetry, this Hermitian symmetry where the powers of T and going back uh, evaluating uh, this FFT evaluation uh, might be even not so easy to improve in the first at first glance, and produces complex output. So it seems like a showstopper if you just think of it only a millisecond. If you think a few seconds longer on it, you can improve here, and that's actually the observation uh, in 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 that uh, in, in our paper. I call it the rectification theorem. So the funny thing is, yes, they are complex. The output, the extrapolated value over a call set of the units uh, of the subgroup, that's, a com that's complex. But it's almost real in the sense that the values, essentially, for, let's forget for a second, it actually only holds if we have, ah, there's still a C0 here. This would be the mean. For, uh, forget it for a second. So if 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 we start off with a function that has average zero, forget the c zero here, then uh, there are almost they're, they're, they're all the values over the, the extrapolated values over the coset lie on a line which goes through the origin, a real line as a subspace of the complex. So that's here. The real line M31 is like the field of the reals, and rho of T is the, the shift that defines the cos set. So uh, it's a complex number times this. So it's really a line in the complex plane. 
And moreover, these 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 rectification factors the form the form an isomorphism. So I will I, I wish so so that means like you have the factor space uh, uh, S one over the subgroup. Say if the subgroup ha ha has has index four. Then, then uh, it, this this is a four-element cyclic group, and its image is again a four-element cy cyclic group. In essentially, it's in S one. It's just a projective variant of it, so that the image is like this. So, so given here, uh, given, think of it in this picture. It's it's five. I just did it not to have uh, to, not to have a two regular image. Uh, so that means though five we wouldn't face in our situation because it's not too adic. Yeah. So, but it uh, doesn't matter for for the principle here. I want to illustrate. So, so if if H has index five in S one, so there are only five core sets. Then what are the what are the rectification factor? You just take the tenth root of unity. This is two times beta root, and take its powers. So these are ah, sorry that was accidentally. So again, so if we would have five core sets only within S one, then we take the tenth roots of unity, because. The first time it's real again is after five powers, and that 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 would that that would be the rectification factors you would see. Or in other words, the first cause set, or let's say the initial one, corresponds to the real line. That means that we start off with real values, therefore we end up with real values if we don't extrapolate at all. The next cause set. Would have values over this line determined by the generator of order double the index by the unit. And then this would be the line, the values would lie in, in the next corset, and in the next corset, in the next, the fourth corset, the, the fifth corset is here. The first one was the trivial one. And then we would return uh, the next one would be is again we, we we end up again real i hope uh, this was not too confusing so so just to recap here so let's ignore the fact that we don't know sorry let's ignore the fact that we don't know about the mean of the function that's technically in our context not a problem we can make these functions having zero mean at almost no extra cost. And so we can simply just rectify these values by, uh, by multiplying uh, with the inverse of, the, of, 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 that, of that factor rho. So that means, it's, it, yes, they are complex, but we can, uh, by simple multiplication, complex multiplication, and it turns out in practice, you can even read it off in, in, in the most situations we face, having index two or index four. Uh, yeah, so, so these are easy, easy to read off. So, and that's, that, 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 that brought us to, I didn't know a better word of it, almost native rich Solomon code. Uh, it's something, it, it, it's based over, over the unit circle in the complex, you, but you input real and you get output real if you, if you, if you rectify. So, so that means commitment cost is not a problem either. So it's as in baby bear if you use uh, non-circuit friendly hashes because it's maybe a 31 bit field, the same piece, the same amount of data you need to hash. Uh, if you use circuit friendly hashes, 
arithmetic hashes, then it's even faster. That's what I mean. Depends on the hash here, you know. And then coding cost, as we saw, that's the Messen FFD is comparable to native encoding. So uh, we expect it to be even faster, but that has to be seen. Uh, implementation will be ready soon. And yeah, little spoiler, there will be follow-up work on this. Hopefully ready by end of the month, not this month, end of November or so. So with again with Shacha and Dav, uh, and this time also David from Starkware. We don't see questions yet uh, on the chat. Uh, I had a couple myself, so I, I thought if you can hear me well. Um, you say that uh, the FFT was much cheaper than uh, for complex uh, keys. Do, do you know, uh, can you tell us what is the cost of complex FFTs to have, uh, uh, to have this in mind? The cost of the complex FFT itself? Yeah. Uh, sorry, I need to return here. I re go back to the slide. Cost of the complex, you just take the same, uh, the, the, co the complex FFT would be a two-adic one. You just mm -hmm. replace here, uh, you have the same number, but instead of like, like here, you see my mouse cursor? Yep. Uh, uh, but you have complex multiplications and additions. Yep. That means yep. a complex multiplication in the 3-3 regime costs, uh, it's like three times three multiplications yeah. for three yeah. base field multiplications, three real multiplications for a single complex, plus additions even. And addition itself is already because it's extension field of degree two, twice as expensive. So uh, overall, it's it's more than three times expensive to, the, or let's say the speed up is more than factor three from the generic complex of FFT down to the split radix. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I, it's, it's, I would say roughly about three times. Uh, I didn't take into account the simple uh, observation that also over the complex for the generic complex multiplication by plus minus i is easy. So it's between two and three times faster. Maybe that's, that's more, more appropriate. Yeah. Um... The second question I had was here you are focusing on mass and plus one, but I guess this work can actually be used for any uh, for any field, for any mass and field, or am I wrong? It, I mean, you can improve here, uh, or you can generalize here. First of all, is for fields which just uh, have the specific. Uh, in which uh, x, square, x, x squared plus 1 is irreducible. Yeah. Uh, and, I mean, it should be also that p plus 1 is smooth. So there's a recent publication that Arun, who's also here, pointed me at yesterday, so uh, about FFT, that exactly use p plus 1 smoothness. So it's a general, uh, let's say it's, it's, it's influenced by the easy FFT either. Yeah. So, uh, so that means people plus one smoothness. That's, that's, that's the thing here. That's the key thing uh, you can do similarly, not with the exactly. So ex um, you might have a root of unity. Uh, well, it's even excluded if, if, if P plus one is smooth. That means it has a high power of two. P, P plus P minus one isn't. And it's probably its worst case to Arctic in most situations. So you face again the Mersenne property. Yeah. yeah, so it can be extended to fields, but it's a highly specific. I wouldn't know. I mean, there, there are other Mersenne, uh, there are probably other primes uh, which satisfied, but we didn't look much into it. So we basically consider the whole thing, main application, the main field we, we uh, have here at the M31. Though it, 
can use it for the M17 also, if that uh, is of some interest, I don't know. And other maybe large primes that are not maybe standardized primes, I didn't look here into that are in which P plus one is smooth. Yeah. Uh, we, we now have a couple of questions. Uh, the first one from Hector. Uh, what about other power of two order subgroups over the complex extension? Is the unit circle the most performance we can hope for? I hardly could understand you. Is is it written in a chat? Can I read it? Yeah, yeah it is written in the chat. Please read it. Just the, I just need to find how to open the chat. Ah, now I can scroll here. So what about other power of two? two order subgroups over the complex extension. I mean, there's only that uh, the unit circle uh, is, for the FFT, you can go probably farther, but there's a problem uh, uh, for uh, going beyond the unit circle. Let me let me go back to, uh, to, to, to the powers we face here. There's actually only one additional factor of two. So to the, the, the red 2 to the 31 corresponds to the unit circle. x squared plus y squared is plus 1. The 2 to the 31 times 2, if we just take out the 2 here, the, the, the other missing, uh, that the, the one and only other power of 2 that is present here, uh, then 2 to the 32 is taking the unit circle, x squared plus y squared uh, equals to 1, and uh, adding the what I call the anti-unit circle, x squared plus y squared minus 1. So the thing is, yes, this is, uh, so you have, uh, there's one, a factor 2 larger than uh, 2 to the 31 uh, subgroup, but it breaks, going over there breaks uh, breaks uh, the relation that conjugation is inversion. So even though you can extend the Massen FFT to that factor two larger subgroup, I wouldn't know how to extend the rectifiability because it's, 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 it's a key property used in this rectification theorem, which is actually quite simple. You just write down the Fourier series. You just write down the powers of the shift, and then you, you center the powers of the shifts in order that you re-obtain a spectrum which is Hermitian symmetric. That's roughly, in my words, uh, what, what's happening here. So, uh, and that simply doesn't work out if, if you can't say, that the conjugate is the inverse. This holds over the unit circle, yes, but over this factor two larger group, over the anti-unit circle, it doesn't hold. I hope this answers the question. But just maybe to add something, uh, unit circle is quite large to the 31. You know, so it, in our context, if you face such long traces like two to the thirty, and you do extrapolation from one w witness domain of size two to the thirty to one uh, to the one and only corset, this is within S one, then. Uh, This is already quite, uh, I mean, these are quite long traces here. And we would, you wouldn't probably, well, at least for our, for, 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 for our uh, considerations. So to the 31, um, I, wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't recommend here to go with high, work with higher blow up factors. So factor two is fine. So, okay, is there any kind of prot? Operation protocol that you can that can drive you out requires you to get out of this real optimal cause. 
real applications. I, I, I hardly understand the question. Uh, could you clarify? This is from from Perez, no? Okay, there's a new message. Not sure if I understand if it's the cool cause set. Uh, I mean, as long as we stay in. Uh, okay. I mean, the thing is that uh, that once once we would leave the realm of uh, uh, it, uh, uh, the realm of S one, the unit circle, then uh, everything seems to break down here. So the the whole so I would expect there is no rectification possible. So that means the main cost, even over the cost that an F that all the FFT operations consume, uh, the main cost is the hashing, the representation of the code words. And if we have fully complex uh, uh, complex uh, code words. Then uh, it's the double cost, and I would even expect it to be more 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 costlier than that, than the baby bear because arithmetics in the complex extension would be f slower than native sixty four bit field arithmetics like baby bear. But I'm not sure if I really answered the question with uh, with that. Yes. That's okay. Another question. We've seen. Wait, wait a second. Uh, we have a highly to Arctic mass field. This brings an awesome. It's a pain in the neck. At Zoom, it scrolls automatically. I don't know why. Do you foresee any way on which this can be applied to non-highly toadic fields on the curves? Like, I'm not. I. I, I don't. I don't. Uh, I never looked at. Uh, I, I wouldn't even know what's the four Q in the grumping curve, the grump king curve. So. Uh, uh, so so the, I just mean that uh, for. So we have curves that have uh, barely almost non uh, roots of unity, like they might have one uh, as much. Uh, so any kind of protocols that rely on having access to the, uh, having access to ha like highly or at least decently to attic fields simply don't work. So I was wondering whether this, uh, this solution that you brought to the table for Mersenne fields can be applied to other fields uh, like the ones that are used in these curves to get to get FFTs and, and highly to addict fields from from the ones that are initially not. I mean, there is something generic in this idea. Uh, like always, you go to extension fields, which are FFT friendly. But the point is, how, 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 how which degree of extension you need, and even if there's something like the generalization of all these improving real FFT of in the complex there you can you can improve here by using the Frobenius FFT. So uh, there is work on it, but I don't recommend to, to go that way if it's beyond degree three, two extension like we face with M31. I would rather recommend to use the ECFFT. I'm not sure what you understand by uh, Liam's trick. Uh, I mean, uh, ECFFT. I'm not sure if this is. Uh, man, Liam is here. <laughs> let him let him answer th this question. Uh, but I'm not sure uh, uh, if you mean the same trick that the, what I would understand stand under Liam's trick, but. Uh, uh, that's just guessing. 
So uh, without clarifying the question, I cannot answer. Okay, seems to be resolved according to your answer. Yeah. Well, uh, let's once again finish for this talk and uh, everyone have a good night, I guess, or day, depending on where you are. Did hardly understand, but I think it was a <laughs> uh, Sorry, I was saying thanks again for the conversation. Uh, no, I understood. Okay, yeah, thanks for having me.